Welcome back to NBC News. I'm Dooza Dragon Ash, your anchor, and here is our beloved team. Well, two thirds of them anyway. Welcome back, Lisa Hermano. Thank you. Hello, everyone. And welcome, Melbourne's writer, always our stoic, supportive, loyal member. Oh, gosh, golly. Well, welcome, everybody. The world this week sees bombers in Russia, a baby bang, or Little Big Bang, if you prefer, which made CERN scientists ecstatic, as the Large Hadron Collider produced the images which scientists say will show us what happened after the Big Bang and will help push forward investigation into the origins of the universe. And President Obama paid a flying visit to Afghanistan. And Albert Gonzalez, dubbed the most prolific commercial hacker in history, has been sentenced in Florida and Boston to two concurrent jail sentences of 20 years each. Albert Gonzalez, a U.S. citizen, would hack into super shop databases such as TK Maxx and steal the credit card details of all the customers. He would sell the lists on with his team known as Hacker 1 and Hacker 2, originally believed to be somewhere in Eastern Europe. Interestingly, given the length of his activities and the 40 million credit details contained on his hard drive, the authorities have only appeared to recover property up to $1.5 million to date. Hackers 1 and 2 have not been found. The long sentences have given rise to anxiety on behalf of Gary McKinnon, the UK hacker who hacked into the NASA computers as the Gonzalez defense of behavior showing Asperger's syndrome has been refused. Autistic behavior is one of the chief reasons that the extradition to the US has so far been avoided by Gary McKinnon. The extradition will be eventually decided on in April. Well, rumblings of dissatisfaction have reached NBC about Dreamland, the Anshi Chung sins in Second Life. We've been approached by the usually unflappable Mimi Junot, who after three years had been given just a few days notice to move her belongings to another sim. The new spaces proffered to Mimi were unlike the beautiful land she had had before and were not thought to be a suitable substitution. Mimi has been trying to negotiate with the management of Dreamland to no avail and was finally driven to the media, upon which action she has been banned from the entire estate. Uh, the estate, by the way, is now approximately 2,000 sims. Mimi has found refuge on a friend sim and with a generous prim allowance, but her main problem has been with the treatment she received at the hands of the management of the Dreamland sims. We're going to be trying to get a hold of someone from the Dreamland estate for you next week, and since we are hearing more reports of the same dissatisfaction coming out of the estate from other residents too. Apple is being its usual cautious self with its release of iPad on the 3rd of April. Not even the shop staff have seen them nor do the techies know how to repair them. Well, let's hope they don't have to just yet. Presumably, the Apple stores will be posting, uh, will be besieged. <laughs> Certainly, Apple seem to think so, as they're posting guards on doors and arranging for overnight stays by the staff. Apple are hoping to sell up to a million iPads in the first stage of sales. Well, the UK is said to be celebrating 10 years of broadband this week, with Virgin Media commissioning a beautiful art exhibition called speed of light from united virtual artists however most residents and companies feel that more could be done about steady streams and speeds on broadband by providers for the resident the guarantee of steady streams is well non-existent and any speed at all is dependent on distances from the exchange with exchanges now thin on the ground this leaves many unsatisfied even business use can come in under speed, despite the higher charge. Streaming in the UK is a risky affair indeed. Promises of high speeds have been seen and delivered in pockets of the UK, but most homes are still working on ASTL. With a government push behind the internet for all, this will seem to be putting the cart before the horse. Indeed, a horse and cart might still be faster than the common broadband speeds, of around six megabytes we have in the UK. And now for these messages.
and welcome back. And welcome back to Lisa Hermano, who must have sore feet by now, Lisa. Oh, my feet are killing me, but the stilettos are off and the slippers are on. Okay, NBC have been hitting the club scene in Second Life, trying to determine the best clubs around. What makes a great club, we asked. Well, the answers were, if the DJs were good, the staff friendly and people who were clubbing created an atmosphere. Anyway, in 2006, there were only about 10 really good live DJ clubs. This has actually grown over the years, and to date, there are approximately um, hundreds. <laughs> Not sure if all would be classed as good. On NBC's Club Crawl, we came across lots of clubs in all shapes and sizes, but the ones that stood out had great hostesses that interacted with the clubbers, and of course, awesome DJs who knew how to play music. NBC chose a party. Well, we chose to party all night at one of the oldest clubs in Second Life, which has been open since 2006. The seventh version of Element Club sequel by Goal. When we walked into the club, the atmosphere was buzzing and the residents were really enjoying themselves. Luckily, one of the oldest, most famous DJs, Captain Clipper, who was actually captivating the audience with his amazing sounds, was playing. The atmosphere was electric, the girl dancers were spotted all around, and the lighting was awesome. The club's design is pure genius, and it's set in the middle of the ocean. When I actually dragged myself out of there, it reminded me of one of those real-life nights in Ibiza. Olé! <laughs> anyway, one thing for certain, there are many great and not so great Second Life DJ clubs, but NBC are sure that the club scene is alive and kicking and there is something for everyone who likes to party. So, has anyone got any headache tablets? Oh yes, I've got a cupboard full. Now, Mankind Tracer, a virtual world rock musician much beloved by virtual residents, released his new CD this week in World. Mankind Tracer, also known as Seth Regan in RL, released Beyond the Shade as a big party in Second Life. You can buy his music on iTunes or link through his site at sethregan.com. Well, the new viewer team of Second Life is catching up on uh, with releases of uh, Tattoo Skins, a new feature. Um, the extra layer visible only in the new beta viewer is being released by designers. Mario Mecula Porter being one of them. With the extraordinary new makeups and accompanying hair and baldies, a new look is being created for residents. Apparently, all residents can now see the new tattoo layer in both viewers, but if you want to wear a new layer, you have to be in the new viewer too. NBC had a look at Tatanuga, which is a makeup and tattoo shop one of the first to attend to the new viewer facilities. And don't forget your Easter egg hunts, which are all over Second Life this week. It's a good way for residents to have fun and get presents, which is a must for any life, really. And Pop Art Lab are changing their sim in April and have put up 1,000 limbums for a machinima contest to mark the memories of the old one. They won't be taking down the old one until putting up the new... And at the same time, they'll be announcing the winner of the Machinima contest, screen their preferred, preferred film, sorry, and provide music for all. For the rules, go to the sim contact, clause your visa. You've just about got time to enter and get your film in now. Right. Now, has anybody got anything else to add before I draw to a close? Um, yeah. yeah. Where's Siggy? Yeah, oh, I don't know. We last saw him on his way to some hot beach somewhere. We haven't seen him since. It's been two <laughs> weeks now. Okay. Well, thank you, everybody. And um, we just need to say good night. So, team? Good night, all. Nighty, nighty. Well, of course, it may not be night where you are, but it is where we are. So, that's all, folks. And have a safe week from NBC News. 